David Pearson, this video is for you, buddy. Okay, so uh, you asked some questions. I was going to do a video about the bottom ends of these motors, um, these triple motors anyway, but your question on Facebook um, basically fast-tracked it for me. So I'm just sort of impromptu, got a couple of cases and a crank and a ignition housing um, and a water pump shaft on my drill here, which I'll show you about that after. Um, and we'll talk about uh, the bottom ends of these motors, the cranks, um, and also answer your question about um, uh, the best way to deliver oil to the bearing, most likely, and basically the, this outer PTO bearing here, uh, which is usually the problem. Um, so we'll go through the different, I guess, thoughts on that, um, because there's not a consensus, I guess you'd say, uh, depending on what your, uh, you know, whether you're particular to keep oil injection or not, or if you like isoflex, there's basically three ways to solve this problem um, of the outer PTO bearing. Um, and these are 600 cases, uh, six, yeah, uh, sorry, yeah, 600 cases. And, uh, you know, so they're not 809 cases, but they're basically the same layout. So, so we'll get into, uh, some minor differences on the 809, which there really aren't any. Um, it's just a slightly wider spacing and a slightly longer crank. Um, but anyway, we'll jump into it. So the first thing we'll talk about is uh, the different... Th there's been... A lot of people think there's just two different styles of crank. That there's the CK3 chassis crank, which is longer, and isoflex, an isoflexed... Um, bearing um, on this end so that I would have an extra seal actually kind of like this crank here. Uh, this is a goofy crank and we'll talk about it. Uh, it's a really rare one. <laughs> so, but there's actually been around four different styles of cranks. So we're working backwards from the newest to the oldest. There's the CK3 um, crank with isoflex. So it's the normal CK3 crank, a little bit longer than this one. This is an F chassis crank. And it has the outer bearing with the seal, no oil hole in the case at all. And this cavity is filled with isoflex. And that's pretty much par for the course for Skidoo motors now. And um, in fact, the newest Skidoo cranks, almost all the bearings are sealed with isoflex. There's no oil being delivered to any of the bearings, um, unless you're talking about the 850. Uh, anyhow, so this bearing would be isoflex and all the rest would be, would be hit by oil and gas mixture. Um, the next one is the CK3 crank that's non-isoflexed. Now I have a, I had an old 98 case, um, and crank that, uh, the crank was rebuilt, but the case was pretty much just a refurbished one. And uh, I sold those to, uh, um, a guy down in, uh, in Munising and, um, that case was, a uh, was stock with the oil hole and the crank didn't have the, uh, the seal. And that is kind of not really super common on the 98s. Uh, that year, roughly 98, 99, that's when they moved to the Isoflex cranks. Um, so that crank was kind of a neat one. Um, the next ones are the 1997s with Isoflex. These ones are rare. That's what this crank is. Um, you can see it's got the the, the locating ring here and the seal right here. Um, this crank is in, from a 1997 Formula 3 um, and the case was was basically mutilated on it, but it had the extra, it was this case, but it had the two extra grooves cut, one for the locating ring and one for the, um, one for the seal. So uh, it was a really goofy one. I've never seen that before. Um, I don't know sure if it was a prototype or whatnot. I mean, I got all these parts from a part stock from a friend of mine. Uh, so that crank's kind of neat and I kept it. Um, I'm going to end up rebuilding uh, one of these motors into a spare motor. But, but anyway, uh, and then the other ones are just the normal, what you see here, um, open bearings and uh, the oil hole, which... I don't have one with a stock oil hole on it, but uh, I have a non-drilled and a drilled case so you can see the difference. And the old pre-96s, 96 and, and before, were were lubed with oil the whole the whole crank. So so that's kind of the difference between them all and the uh, 
There's another iteration of Crank, which is the 1995, which had different bearing spacing. Um, I think it was on the PTO end. They had different bearing spacing. So you can't use a 95 Crank in a, in a uh, newer case and vice versa without some, without some work. Um, it's a similar story for the Mach Z cranks. Um, I would say almost exactly. Uh, the 780s, you know, use a totally different, they had like tons of seals and stuff in between. It was pretty interesting. Anyway, well, I digress. We'll move off that. And, uh, but just kind of interesting history of there's been so many iterations of crankshafts in this, you know, such a short span. Um, so I guess we'll go to the first the first way to uh, to solve your outer bearing issue. The easiest thing um, that you can do is a lot of people say just either turn your oil pump. So this is a an ignition housing. So make sure your oil pump is adjusted. That's stock. So those two lines line up right there at idle. There you go. Some people suggest, you know, giving it a bit more at idle so that at all at all throttle settings, you're, you're getting more oil than usual. Um, and or mixing fuel, you know, making sure that's that's set properly and then mixing a bit of oil in your fuel and running it. And a lot of people, um, rather than pull their motor apart, they will run with just a really rich oil mixture um, with no oil hole fix or anything. And some have had fine luck with that. And uh, um, you know, like I, ha I had one of my F3 motors had 10,000 kilometers on it, had the stock oil pump setting on it and no oil hole. And it was fine. The bearing was actually in good shape. So it was kind of hit and miss. Uh, the next one is to do that same thing. I just told you is to set your oil pump a bit rich, but if you've got your motor apart, um, drill the oil hole. Now the oil hole, this is one way to do it. Um, I don't understand the thinking with this case and who whoever drilled all these bloody holes in here it doesn't make any sense but uh one way to do the oil hole is is to drill it right here so there, there's the where the, the inner bearing rides and here's where the outer bearing rides and the oil hole would come in between the bearings and then effectively dribble oil on this outer bearing um another way to do it is to drill the hole so that it comes out just behind the seal on this in this area right here um, so that it dribbles on the outside of the bearing and I'll flip this motor over or this case over so you can kind of see what it looks like from the inside. So they drilled the hole right here. So both holes are drilled right there. Um, one goes straight down, like, which again, I don't understand why they did that. And then, and then there's one drilled at an angle that meets up inside here too. Um, on my sled, I, I actually drilled the hole right there and just went down at an angle and went in between the bearings and and it works just fine so that's that's another way that's a common way people people do it if you want to keep the oil injection that's a good fix um now if you want to go premix this is where things get a bit interesting um if you want to go premix i would recommend that you're already planning to take your motor out and do a rebuild or, or refresh or check everything over. Um, and the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull the oil pump off of the ignition housing, which will require take it, taking that bolt off, pulling the gear off, and then taking the, the two bolts on the oil pump, one there and one there, and uh, taking the oil pump off. And then get a piece of like aluminum flat aluminum sheet, like an eighth inch thick or three sixteenth inches thick, and then uh, trace out the pattern and where the bolt holes are and cut that and grind it and, you know, make yourself a block off plate and then put the gasket with a bit of uh, gasket dressing and then reattach it with the same, the same bolts, basically block that all off, take the oil pump right off. Um, another thing too, is then you're also going to take out the intermediate gear, the plastic one, and this gear. So these spaces will be empty. Um, you have two options here. You can just leave it like that. Um, mine is empty and I don't I have no ill effects, but a lot of guys who are building racing motors and whatnot will 
we'll order the uh, stuffer gears from crank shop so crank shop makes like a a plastic gear that fills in here and then this one will have two notches out on it and uh, they just sit in there and uh, take up the space that the gears would normally take up just to give you like fine control over your case volume um, because this counts as part of the case volume um, on the on the um, magneto side so you can you can stuff for gears or not doesn't matter if you're just trail sled it doesn't really matter i've I've done plug chops and checked air fuel and there's no change in my, you know, between the three cylinders and mine. So, so that's fine. Um, the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get rid of the oil injectors. So these, these guys here, and they're just pressed in. Um, so the easiest way to deal with them is to literally have the case sitting like this, uh, or on its, on the reed, uh, on the intakes so you can see the the oil injector there um get a blow a torch and just heat up around here not not super hot just for like a minute just move the torch around here it just breaks the the loctite seal and then put your punch on there and then take a dead blow hammer and just punch the things right out that's it that's all you have to do not complicated after you've done that run a tap through them an m8 um, if you want, or I'm not sure if a one eighth MPT fits in there. It might, it might, but I just uh, drilled mine out and, uh, and tap them to, um, an M8 bolt. And all I do is put a ceiling, some red Loctite, a ceiling washer, and then a hex cap screw, um, similar to that. Not sure it'll focus there. Yeah, anyway, so it's like a hex head cap screw. Um, and I put those in and make sure you did get one that doesn't stick out. And then that seals them up for good. And you never have to worry about your oil injection again. Uh, just make sure you remember to premix your gas because that, that's the next problem. Um, I'm not sure what happened with this case. This is kind of interesting. The guy drilled oil holes everywhere. Um, but I don't see the point of that. It makes no sense because, you know, here's the, here's the, the open part of the case is right here. So you're getting oil inside these bearings, um, you know, here, here, whoops, here, here. So all those are getting oil already. I don't understand why you'd want to inject oil back here. It's, I mean, you can, it's not going to hurt anything, but it's just a lot of drilling for nothing. Um, the other way that you can actually um, do this is if you want to convert a non-isoflex crank to an isoflex crank, it can be done. It's not easy, uh, partly because um, you have to put a, you have to cut two you have to machine two grooves in here. You have to take the spacer out um, and you have to machine a, a distance ring in here and you have to machine a, a groove for the distance ring and a groove for the seal. And I mean, if you got access to a really swanky machine shop and can do that, then fine. All you have to do is pull the outer bearing and the spacer out and then put your distance rings and your seal in there and um, slap it in the crank and you're good to go. Other than that, I think it's, if you're really concerned about your oil, it's better and easier just to do the oil hole and keep your oil injection or just convert to premix. Uh, the nice thing about converting to premix is that, you know, you have oil in the gas and it's going to hit every part of that crank and the windage from the crank is going to, is going to fling the oil, the heavier oil out of the gas mixture. And it's going to, coat everything all the bearings everything so so that's why i like it and the piston skirts as well as the you know lower end bearings here and the you know your wrist pin bearings here it's just a really easy insurance and you know that it's you know the two stroke is its own best oil pump uh, because the engine's running it's getting oil when you're pre-mixing so that's um that's basically it for for your oil injection or, or your, your solutions for, you know, getting the bottom end lubed well. Um, 
And I don't know if there's too much more to say about that. Uh, if you have any more questions, let me know. Um, the other the other thing I wanted to also talk about is while you have the bottom end apart, is you might as well just check the water pump um, while you're there. I'm just going to flip this over. and So the water pump... In the, the water pumps where one of the areas on the 809 is a little bit different than, than on the uh, 600 and 700. Um, on the 600 and 700, uh, the water pump sits right in this channel and it pumps water or coolant into the base of the cylinders, up and then out through the head. On the Mach Z, it's different. It pumps it uh, through a tube to the head and the coolant paths a little bit different. But the general idea is pretty much the same. What you want to do is... Uh, is take that pump cavity off. So you have to take the mag the um, ignition cover off and then you have to undo all the bolts and pull the the um, pump cover off and take the pump and shaft out. And there'll be three seals and two bearings on there and just remove everything um, off of it. Get the bearings replaced, get the seal kit done. But there's one thing you're going to have to check and that is sometimes the shafts have a tendency to or the seals have a tendency to, to mark the shafts so as you can see there's a line right there you can see it right here so that's where a seal's been riding and it's actually cut into the shaft um, so there are ways to if they're not too deep you can essentially resurface the shaft and that's why it's stuck in a drill here so the a good thing to do is to just chuck it not too tight because you're chucking the threads. So just chuck it in enough so that you have enough grips to spin it. Um, and I'm going to try to set the phone up uh, and show you how to basically do this. It's very simple. It's just WD-40 on the shaft. Um, and I'm going to try to set this phone up so that you can see what I'm doing. All right. Okay. Now, all we do is we grab some fine emery cloth right here. And all you want to do is uh, just like you would in a, uh, on a lathe. So you start spinning it. Just work it back and forth. Whoops. Watch your fingers. So you do that for a couple minutes anyway, and uh, you'll see the lines start to go away. And then if you want to polish the shaft, because you don't want it to be too rough or else it will start tearing at the, the lip of the seal, which is, it's tough, but not tough a anyway. So on the shaft will be a whole bunch of aluminum slurry with uh, that you've, or sorry, steel, um, steel fines that you've grounded off to a little slurry. So flip the emery cloth over onto the smooth side and then just keep going. Um, Once you're done, uh, you'll see that the line's still there, but you'll be able to actually polish it right off um, after a couple of passes. And uh, that's good because these things are really hard to come by. Um, and uh, yeah, they're not easy to machine either. So so just do that trick. It takes a little while. and and uh, the seals are quite tight so you can take off a little bit of material without any ill effects. Okay, uh, that's about it for this time. And uh, if you have any more questions, just feel free to message me and I'll do another video.